Hey guys, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about microinflammation on DHT, on how both of those factors affect the follicles and make them more DHT sensitive. And I also will talk about scalp inflammation and what is the difference between scalp inflammation and microinflammation. And of course, factors that can increase microinflammation inflammation itself and what you can do regarding it to reduce it. And for you guys who are on the channel for the first time, remember to subscribe so you get notification for the latest content that I upload. And if you're new or a subscriber, welcome back. My name is Alex and I'm previously a hair loss sufferer who was able to regrow back my own hair. And I'm also a certified trichologist. So let's dive into today's topic about microinflammation. And of course, the big question is what is actually microinflammation? And microinflammation is something that you can spot on your scalp around the follicles. So basically what happens is that there is a redness around the follicles that usually can be easily seen if you are using microscope, right? So for example, if you have a USB microscope and you check your hair follicles, you would see that there is redness around them if you are having microinflammatory problem. And for example, for someone who is not too DHT sensitive or don't have that high DHT sensitivity, uh, that redness or there possibly won't be any redness at all or it will be some pinkness around the follicles. But if there is a lot of uh, inflammation or microinflammation going on, then those uh, areas will become much more red and it will, will be much more visible. Um, and like I said, it's easy to see it with microscope. If you are having microscopes, then you can easily check your scalp. And usually microinflammation is something that affects around 80% uh, uh, of the guys who have a male pattern of baldness or genetical alopecia. And what it does is basically makes follicles more sensitive to DHT, right? And DHT again is a problem because if the DHT starts to attach the follicles, it will make them to basically become weaker, lighter and thinner over time. Like as hair growth cycle continues, the follicles will be affected by DHT and they will start to shed out, right? And the new hairs that are growing back, they will basically be kind of miniaturized. They will not be as strong anymore. So this is a problem that has to be uh, basically addressed as soon as possible. And uh, when it comes to microinflammation and scalp inflammation, like scalp inflammation is something that affects a whole scalp, right? It can affect the top part of the scalp, but it can also affect the sides and back of the scalp. And it is basically kind of general redness around the uh, scalp itself, right? And uh, one can have a microinflammation and scalp inflammation at the same time, for example, it can happen. But uh, scalp inflammation is kind of much more severe. It is more burning sensation. It is itchiness, for example. It is uh, a lot of redness, for example, like more uh, tension, uh, tingling possibly, like there is a lot of factors going on. And in terms of microinflammation, it is like more like a slight itch or slight itching that you kind of need to scratch in different areas of your scalp. And those scratch spots can change over time, right? So it's a, it's a bit uh, kind of less aggressive condition and one often can overlook it and thinks that it is not something that one has to be worried about. But it is a problem because again, if you are having microinflammation in your scalp, it will make your uh, follicles more easily affected by DHT and that will be a problem because the hair will at some point start to shed or you will have a high shedding rate depending on how is your DHT sensitivity. And usually, for example, one addresses this problem by, for example, blocking DHT by, let's say, by drugs such as Finasteride or supplements such as Salpometo, for example. And it can work well, right? But again, it is something that one usually has to work on deeper level to address the DHT sensitivity. To address microinflammation, one should address the factors that actually causes that microinflammation is higher than it should be. And some of the factors that can cause higher microinflammation are, for example, stress. It is, for example, toxic foods. It is, for example, uh, lifestyle or um, unhealthy lifestyle habits, smoking, drinking alcohol, for example, lack of the sleep or sleep uh, disturbing sleep patterns. It is also some types of medications that can cause increased uh, microinflammation. It is like a general toxicity of the body, uh, inflammatory problems in the body, gut problems, of course. Like uh, those are a couple of the factors that can cause that one starts to develop microinflammation, which again will affect the follicles and cause that redness around them. And like I said, it is possible to address this uh, problem with, for example, taking finasteride uh, or dutasteride or salpometo in uh, earlier cases. But it is not going to solve the problem why one is having the microinflammation in the first place. So basically to address it, one has to work on the factors that is actually causing the microinflammation and solve them, basically break down the variables that is uh, 
causing and affecting it and causing that it is higher than it should be. And then uh, by taking, for example, DHT blocker, one be, will be able to stop the heal loss progression, but also slow down the shed, for example, right? Um, by striking, for example, here cycle, one likely will also see some growth activity after adding um, the DHT blocker, but also addressing the microinflammation itself. So this is something I want to share with you uh, guys in today's video, because it is important to understand what is correlation between microinflammation, which causes redness around the follicles, and scalp inflammation, which is more like a redness on the scalp itself, and DHT, and how basically all those factors correlated and can cause uh, the tear of falling out and become weaker. And for you guys who are looking for guidance and help regarding your situation, or you're not seeing results from the treatment, you can schedule a call below the studio, there's a link for it. Uh, let's find out what is holding you back, uh, that you are not being able to uh, basically regrow your own here. Thanks for watching the video, guys, and see you next one. Cheers.